This is Duke University. History is a race against time. And then history oftentimes is also against memory when state-sanctioned historiography often works to suppress or even erase folk memory. They have been doing this project since 2010, when one would give you a little bit more detail. And then one of the most exciting things is that with all these like, thousands of hours of interview that they have uh, collected are donated to Duke University for us to do preservation and later be accessible for researchers and people who are interested in Chinese history. I would like to go back to uh, my first documentary film I, I made in the t t 1988. Uh, this was my beginning to, to, to working for the documentary film. <laughs> I didn't know, I had not any idea about documentary film or including what's the film I want to make because I I working with the CCTV as the freelance but I really want to make in my my own thing but I had not idea what kind of thing I want to make. So this is my first shot about the five the young artists who is called Man Liu. Man Liu is, means Chinese, uh, is the kind of, it's, uh, we had a last name in English, it's a freelance, uh, but in China, at that time, it's, Andy, it's called Man Liu. We have to find the, which the space we can live in for next, few, next week or even for, for next meal. So the, after the first film, I, I, I had the, the uh, idea, to, I really want to make in my, my, uh, my, my own film not working for the CCTV, for BTV or any TV or even for the, for the uh, American TV. <laughs> we had uh, 10 villagers from the all of China to, to come to Cao Tan Di. We gave the very uh, simple training, just to how, learn how to use in the camera. So after three days, the, the village people uh, came back to the village to make in their first uh, short film. We had this project, it's uh, five years. So uh, five years later, 2010, we had this project called the Memory Project. For, for me, it's uh, why we are coming to, the, to, to the, this step, not just working for my artwork or film, also working for the, the kind of the public the, uh, project the archive or memory or interview. So right now I'm here I'm not just to speak to people or communicate with people as the filmmaker or artist. Also I'm the really person, really person who stay in China to try to find the what's the what's the we can do for this uh, for this uh, on the people. Because for the memory project it's, it's called all the artists, the young filmmakers to go back to the village where they were born or the parents or, or the, the grandparents living or so this the, the go back to the root. That's what's very important. I think it's for me, it's also for young artists it's very important. We find the what's the where we are from, how we can uh, contribute or try to build something for this country. Yikaiwa 呃, I never thought that I would um, really do anything with history or like um, or go back to this village that I have almost forgotten. But when um, the Cao San Di um, memory project started in 2010, um, I went back to this village um, where my dad, where my father was, and where my grandfather was still living. So these are the people, the old the old people I interviewed back in the village. This is the first one I interviewed Yu Xiantan. So after I heard all these stories, I began to um, create my um, work, um, which includes their stories and also my, my own story.
点个没有字儿呗，这点点才有字儿呗。你床上不能。床上的时候，呃，跟那个啥的时候，白天的早点了，我就不来。I started um keeping count of how many people died during the famine, um, and I um got. A donation of three hundred ninety-eight uh, yuan to uh, erect a um, tombstone for these people. I began to um, build a book, a reading room in this village. I didn't know who the audience would be um, for the for the reading room at first, but then I found out that kids in the village really love to read. Zhong, Zhong. 下来一点好一点嗯。一旦历史，你讲过之后，嗯，你必须要负责任的。嗯。你比如说，我从小到大，我我我讲我是怎么回事，是吧？嗯。你要对老一辈人负责任，你对自己负责任，那肯定的。对后一辈人也要负责任。那肯定的。大家好，我叫李新民。Hi, my name is Li Xinmin. I went to school um, until the fourth grade. I left my village when I was 15 because uh, I really was look, looking forward to kind of seeing what's in a big city and also wanted to work um, to, help make, to help make money because my family was very poor. I met uh, Wu Wenguan in, when I was 17 and in 2008 <laughs> came to Wu Wenguan's workstation. So I saw these um, others starting to go back to their own villages um, to do their theater work, to do documentary work. And I began to think, I have a village that I could go back to too. So I borrowed um, Zhou Xueping's um, kind of cassette recorder. So in a picture, um, that's my village, and every time um, to get there, we have to walk for a really long time. So every time I'm um, there, I don't want to leave, and every time I've left, I don't want to go back. <laughs> 喂，那是猪，啊，么我养多少？博士光，你不想骂我？我养，博士光呢？我养，好，你不想骂我？你这几个养，我博士光就去，不是猪。So I recorded the lives of this girl who's about the same age as I am, um, and her her life there seems to be uh, not very different uh, from what life would have been 50 years ago. 是我妈从我房间抓我整个来，我怎么打人来？你都把他追来追去，又跑去我家小强那时候，我把我疼死了。我又不当你了，又不当那个。This girl, um, got married at sixteen and had a kid, and that year, um, as I was filming, um, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was pregnant. That year, um, as I was filming, the Chinese government decided to kill her because she was Build a reading room in the village. I don't read a lot of books, and I don't know a lot of characters, uh, written characters, and so I would like for the kids in the village to be able to read more. Hi, my name is Zhou Xueping. I was born in 1985. I was born here. I joined the Memory Project in 2009, and that's also the beginning of my creative life. So my creative work has always been um, re related to the village. 
So starting in 2010, I started to go back to my village to interview the old people. Um, and so far, I've interviewed 17 of them. I interviewed them because I didn't know uh, much about the history, um, about what, how the, it happened, how the famine happened, and the details of what happened. Yeah,都走走了。你要拿家人拿着你不是走着多回家的吗呀？我想继续回村是因为我也想继续呃做一些实际的事情，不只是把他们拍完了我就走了离开了。所以一二年我又回到了我的村子。so I went back again in 2012 um, because I wanted to actually do something useful for the village instead of just filming them and leave. So I also erected a tombstone and it was with the help of the kids in the village who helped me um, to kind of do the tally of the people who died. And in 2013, I started doing things like picking up trash and also starting a old people's fund to help um, the old people with daily supplies. So this is what I've been doing for the last five years. There's amazing power in just being in your space and feeling this the way in which um, people move in and out, go to the village, come back. Um, are engaged with this thing called memory uh, and and in in discovering the how to make films or how to make, do interviews there's remembrance and then in remembrance there's this deep discovery and it feels like when you're in there that it's it goes round and round and and we just saw it here uh, go to the village and and do some interviews and then come back and what leads, what started as an inquiry into history leads to a monument, leads to dance, leads to a library. You know, moving from the discovery of history to then feeling like one's an agent in history. So what do I do about what I see? Who gave me a t-shirt that, it's my favorite t-shirt. It says, it says 100% uh, uh, life, 0% art. And like many mathematical formulas, it really is the inverse. It's really 100% art there. But one reason it's art is because it focuses on life uh, and deeply focuses on life and on, you know, on, on, on life that has been uh, erased, on history that's been erased, on, on memory that's, that's been erased. When, when we were there, and I, I think I asked the question of, would, like, did you get grants for this? And I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he said something like, I don't like to get grants. Grants, like, change what you're going to do. I like to just start doing. And then sometimes money follows and sometimes it doesn't, but we do what we need to do. It sounds so pure, but I think, uh, and, and I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but there is a way in which the, the intuition, the sort of impulse, the uh, instinct to move in this direction is what, what makes it 100% life and 0% and art, and then in the next minute, you know, 100% art and 100% life. We come back to parts of China that are still incredibly, what do we call them, uh, poor, hard to get to, out of the way places. Uh, and there are places that um, are not only um, being written out of contemporary China's narrative of the Chinese dream and the contemporary narrative of China rising 
and the contemporary narrative of what makes China great on the global stage. There are places that still have, as Tom was saying, are all about life, where people live, where people struggle, where people against so much force of history refuse to forget. Now, how you get people to articulate those memories, those pasts that now have hardly any space in contemporary China is an anthropological project, for sure. Uh, it's a filmmaking project. As we've seen, it's a collaborative project. Uh, you don't just show up, even for folks who are going back to their home villages. You know, and I really hope people realize this. Even going back to a place where you have a connection requires an incredible amount of hard work to build relations, to build collaborations, to get people to talk, to get people to feel comfortable talking to you about the past, in part because those pasts have been so politicized in mainstream and official Chinese historiography. These rural histories, these rural places in a country that is so obsessively urbanizing really have no place. So I see this project as intensely political. I see it as ethical in the sense of the way that they're trying to do the work. And I see it as ultimately giving us um, an archive that will be stored here at Duke uh, to uh, work with students, to work with other researchers, to delve into a history that no one wants to, to remember. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.